Yesterday, Apple began their WWDC conference with a huge keynote that brought improvements across the board to their software. It's a year of refinements this time, with hundreds of small improvements to iOS, iPadOS, macOS, and more all bundled into a software update for each of them that's coming this fall. Now with this in mind, here's 10 features that will benefit you as soon as these updates are released in the fall. Me too! Let me fix this. Better, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she wanted for her birthday. So widgets, they are finally on the home screen of the iPad, breaking free of the column on the left on the home screen. They can now be placed any way you wish. And alongside this, App Library from iOS 14 now comes over to the iPad, making it even easier for you to manage your home screen. Notifications get a big boost this year with being able to set them with the new focus area. So if you're playing a game or working away, you can set notifications that can hide away and then show up in the new notification summary right on your lock screen. Now this and have some new modes which can mute notifications either for an hour or a day, either for all your apps, a few apps, or even certain message groups as well. Now Siri, finally works offline, so you don't have to have your 4G, 5G or Wi-Fi connected just so you can ask Siri how the weather is. Now you can ask it to open an app, dictate as well if you want to, offline. And it's going to be a lot easier now. And that's both for iPads and iPhone and macOS as well. Now, live text looks like it's inspired by Google Lens, and this is where you can hold up your iPhone or iPad uh, to maybe a picture or something maybe to be displaying on your Mac, and it will be able to lift the text off this display, and then you can copy it into a, a notes app if you want to, all through live text, so it's gonna be really useful. Safari gets a big redesign in iOS 15 this year with the address bar now at the bottom so now it's even easier to reach with your thumb and you can also use gestures with your thumb to swipe between different tabs and windows if you want to as well. Now this also extends to macOS Monterey and iPadOS 15 because there is a big redesign for the tabs in the address bar so it frees up even more space to view that web page you want to as well. And of course there's also a new welcome screen so if you want to perhaps have your own picture display when you launch Safari this time, now you can. Now SharePlay is Apple's new feature of helping you throughout this pandemic. So if you're watching a film or listening to music, all you can do now is invite your friends and family to listen along, to watch along, and you can speak to one another as you're listening and watching. It's a really useful feature. Also comes to iPadOS 15, iOS 15, and macOS Monterey. Now this also goes into FaceTime as well, which also had some improvements. So now you can send a link to someone who maybe have a, an Android phone, or a Windows PC, and they can join the call from within a web browser. So it's even more useful for FaceTime now. A small one, but a useful feature, AirPlay to Mac finally arrives. So if you're listening to some music on your iPhone and you come back home and you just switch on your Mac, now you can then transfer that music track straight to your Mac and just play where you left off. So incredibly useful. Now, Universal Control is a big feature that was demoed by Craig Federighi in the keynote. Now, this is where you could have your iPad and Mac connected to one another. And by using the trackpad and the keyboard on your Mac, you can then have that browse over to the iPads. And if, say, you want to perhaps transfer a video clip from the iPad to the Mac, all you have to do, just drag it across. Easy as that. Privacy is being pushed once again by Apple this year, and rightly so. I mean, they are really kind of leading the pack in this. And at WWDC's keynote, they announced iCloud Plus as a way of introducing a VPN to your daily browsing. So it's gonna be a lot more secure. Now, this is a service that's being rolled out to all iCloud members. So even though it's iCloud Plus, if you're paying for iCloud, if you sign up to iCloud, you'll be able to use it. Easy as that. Now there's also um, more secure features coming to mail. So you can hide your email, which is a very useful feature. So that way if a recipient gets your email, they might get either a jumbled email address or just nothing at all. So a lot easier. And there's also an app privacy report that can be found in the settings where you're given an overview of the apps that have used certain parts of the hardware aspects of your iPhone or iPad. So it's similar to screen time if you use that as well. So it'll, it'll appear like a notification and then you can just look through the apps that have been using certain parts of your device. And finally, it's small refinements. I think this is really the theme of this year for 
all the updates from Apple. There's little touches just sprinkled across the whole OS of iPad, iPhone and Mac OS, which really kind of sum up to be a substantial update for every single device now. So whether it could be the magnifying glass that makes the return. It used to be really difficult last few years where you'd highlight text and you wouldn't really see what word you were highlighting. Now the magnifying glass that's made a return is much easier now. There's even a progress bar in the Files app. So if you're transferring or copying files between folders in iPad OS or iOS, you can actually see a progress bar for how long it's taken and the storage that's left to copy over. So really useful there. So there is like a just incredible amount of features and we're still finding them out. The developer beaters have now been used by developers and even fans as well, installing to their devices and we're slowly kind of unraveling what else is being shown in these new updates now that hasn't been announced. But really these are only the start of the features that have been brought. I mean, to keep in mind, between now and when they're actually released to the masses, there's gonna be more beta releases, there's gonna be more refinements to the software as well, because we may see different um, user interface changes or even color changes uh, to certain things as well. So there's a lot to watch out for. Now, I should mention that while there are updates for watchOS 8 and Apple's other products like tvOS and Home, they look to be a more refined release for this year. And it seems as though that Apple kinda of wanna push the bigger features for Mac OS Monterey, iPad OS 15 and iOS 15. So do expect to see all these updates for your iPhone, iPad and Mac towards the end of this year, probably be towards when the iPhone 13 gets released and perhaps when the new M2 Macs or M1X Mac also get announced as well. So thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what were your favorite features announced at WWDC 2021. If you enjoyed the video, do give it a like and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. I've been Daryl Baxter for Tech Radar and I'll see you on the next video.